Hey everybody, it is Wednesday, April 15th. I hope you're having a great day. Weather today should be a little bit warmer than yesterday, so you got that going for you. Hopefully you can get outside and play a little bit. Should be sunny. Nothing too crazy for reminders. Just a reminder, those changes I sent out on IXL were sent out on Monday. Same with Miss Summerfeld in reading. So take a look at those. Make sure you spend some time on IXL. But if you have questions on which ones you should be working, let us know. Free lunch and breakfast, you don't need to call ahead. You can just head up there between 11 and 1. Free lunches and tomorrow's breakfast for anybody younger or 18 and younger down to six months old. So go take advantage of that. Call Mr. S if you have any questions. I'd love to hear from you guys. So keep those messages coming in. I like hearing from you guys and getting updates. If you have any questions, please let me know. Make sure you guys are staying safe and staying home. Taking a look at the academic side, math, um, make sure you guys are doing your prodigy, 15 minutes, 20 minutes every day, uh, really important. Mr. Grouper would agree with that. He's right here. Maybe you guys know who Mr. Grouper is. Uh, IXL, you guys know the standards. Kahoot, I posted a new math one. Reading, you've got AR and IXL. Uh, make sure you guys are reading every day. Social studies. That Lieutenant Governor still, video is still up, but I also put a new code up this week, and make sure you guys are checking out those specialist links to see what's going on for Art and FIED and from Mr. Newkirchen. So um, take a look at those, and music as well. Here's just those standards, things I want you to work on in IXL. It should be highlighted when you go in there, but it's just up here. It's also, uh, I posted a picture of this in on Dojo as well in the math section. So these are the ones that you're working on. So just take a look at those. And on to the city of Ember. We are learning more. Uh, we've got Lena's grandma did find the box. So actually I'm going to start today um, by looking at the map. And then we're actually going to read the very first few pages again of the story. So I read them once. I'll read them again because I think now we're getting some more hints. Uh, so I am going to reread like that very first section of the story. It's only a couple of pages. And then I'll read some more of the, the next chapter. So again, here's the, the, uh, the city. We're learning more about those little kiosk things. Uh, that's where they post notes and all that stuff. These little red dots I can put up here. So those are going on. A lot of this hap stuff is happening. Harkin Square was where the big uh, city hall meeting was. Uh, it was in Harkin Square in the center of the city there. So this is that very beginning of the story. So the story begin, began. So I'm going to go back and read a little bit of this and add some context to the new stuff. So when the city of Ember was just built and not yet inhabited, the chief builder and the assistant builder, both of them wary, sat down to speak of the future. They must not leave the city for at least 200 years, said the chief builder, or perhaps 220. Is that long enough? asked the assistant. It should be. We can't know for sure. And when the time comes, said the assistant, how will they know what to do? We'll have to provide them with instructions. Of course, the chief builder replied. But who will keep the instructions? Who can we trust to keep them safe and secret all that time? The mayor of the city will keep, them, keep the instructions, said the chief builder. We'll put them in a box with a timed lock set to open on the proper date. And will we tell the mayor what's in the box, the assistant asked? No, just that it's information they don't need and they must not see until the box opens of its own accord. So the first mayor will pass the box to the next mayor, and then the, that one to the next, and so on through the years, all of them keeping a secret all this time? What else can we do, asked the chief builder. Nothing about this endeavor is certain. There may be no one left in the city by then and no safe place for them to come back to. So the first mayor of Ember was given the box, told to guard it carefully, and solemnly swore to secrecy. When she grew old and her time as mayor was up, she explained about the box to her successor, who also kept the secret carefully, as did the next mayor. Things went as planned for many years, but the seventh mayor of Ember was less honorable than the ones who had come before him. And more desperate, he was ill. He had the coughing sickness that was common in the city then, and he thought that the box might hold the secret that would save his life. 
He took it from its hiding place in the basement of the gathering hall and brought it home with him, where he attacked at it with a hammer. But his strength was failing, and by then all he managed to do was dent the little little, and before he could return the box to its official hiding place or tell his successor about it, he died. The box ended up in the back of the closet, shoved behind some old bags and bundles. There it sat unnoticed, year after year, until its time arrived, and the lock quietly clicked open. And that's how the story began, because then we get into assignment day with uh, Lena and Dune. So, I'm going to skip ahead to actually where we are today and begin reading the next chapter. I just wanted to read that very beginning part. So, here we are in chapter 7, A Message Full of Holes. Remember, Lena found a box, and uh, Poppy was playing with the message inside. It was the printing that sparked Lena's curiosity. It was not the handwriting, or if it was... It was the neatest, most regular handwriting she'd ever seen. It was more like the letters printed on cans of food or along the sides of pencils. Something other than the hand had written those words, a machine of some kind. This was a, the writing of the builders. And this piece of paper must have come from the builders, too. Lena gathered up the scraps of paper from the floor, gently pried open Poppy's fists and mouth to extract the crumbled wads. She put all of them into the dented box and carried it to her room. That evening, Granny and the baby were both asleep a little after eight. Lena had nearly an hour to examine the discovery. She took the scraps from the box and spread them out over the table in her bedroom. The paper was thick. At each torn edge was a fringe of tangled fibers. There were so many little pieces in one big piece with so many holes that it was like lace. The chewed bits were beyond saving. They were almost a paste. But Lena spread them out at the big lacy piece and saw that the one edge of it, which was still intact, and a column of numbers, which she collected the dry scraps and puzzled over them for a long time, figuring out what they were. They fit into a larger piece. When she had arranged them, as well as she could what it this is what it she had so here's this picture right of what it looks like i'll zoom in a little bit you can maybe make out some words i think this is going to be instructions this official document period of years preparation made for inhabitants of a city so we kind of got all these little things, right? Something marked by an E, um, open, stocked, back, hopes, head down, approximate three hours, dis. So we've got all these weird things. We don't know what it means. It's kind of this weird, uh, it's like a puzzle. Lena could not make sense of only a few words here and there. Even so, something about this tattered document was exciting. It was not anything like Lena had ever seen. She stared at this very first word at the top of the page, instra, and then she suddenly knew what it must be. She'd seen that often enough at school. It had been the beginning of instructions. Her heart began knocking in her chest like a fist at a door. Ooh, simile. Then she found something. She had found some, something strange and important. Instructions for something, but for what? And how terrible that Poppy had found it first and ruined it. It occurred to Lena that this might be what her grandmother had been talking about for so long. Perhaps this is the thing that was lost. But of course, not knowing what it had been that was lost. Granny wouldn't have recognized the box when she saw it. She would have tossed it out the closet just as care carelessly she tossed everything else however it didn't matter whether this was the thing or not or not this was the or not the thing it was a mystery in itself whatever it was and lena was determined to solve it the first step was to stick the scraps of paper down they were so light that the breath of, could scatter them so she took a little bit of glue up, left in her old bottle painstakingly she put a dot of glue on the 
on each of the scraps and pressed one into place on one of her precious few remaining whole sheets of paper. She put another piece of the paper at the top and this and set the box on top to flatten everything down. Just as she finished, the lights went out. She had forgotten to keep an eye on the clock on her windowsill. She had to undress and get in bed in the dark. She was too excited to sleep. Much that night, her mind whirled around, trying to think of what the message she'd found might be. She felt sure it had something to do with saving the city. What if these instructions were fixing the electricity? Or for making a movable light? That would change everything. When the lights went on in the morning, she had a few minutes before Poppy wakened to work at the puzzle. But there were so many words missing. How could she ever make sense of such a jumble? As she pulled, out her, pulled on her red jacket, she tied the frayed and knotted laces of her shoe. She thought about it. The paper was so important. Shouldn't she keep it to herself? But who could she tell? Maybe the messenger captain. She would know about things like official documents. Captain Fleary, Lena said when she got to work. Would you have time to come home with me come home with me later on today? Just for a minute. I found something I'd like to show you. Found what? asked Captain Fleary. Some paper with some important writing on it. I think it might be important. Captain Fleary raised her skinny eyebrows. What do you mean important? Well, I'm not sure. Maybe it isn't. But would you look at it anyway? So that evening, Captain Fleury came home with Lena and peered at the bits of paper. She bent down and inspected the writing. Full, she said. Ox, Rem, Aunt. What kind of words are those? I don't know, said Lena. The words are broken up because Poppy chewed on them. I see, said Captain Fleury. She poked at the paper. This looks like instructions for something, she said. A recipe, I suppose. Small steel pan. That would be what you would use to cook with. But who could, who, but who would have such a small, perfect writing? That's the way they wrote in the old days, said Captain Fleury. It could be a very old recipe. But then why would they have kept it in this beautiful box? She showed the box to Captain Fleury. I think it was locked up there for some reason, and you wouldn't lock up something unless it was important. But Captain Fleury didn't seem to have hurt, hurt her. Or, she said, it could be a school exercise, someone's homework that never gotten turned in. But have you seen paper like this? Doesn't it look as if it came from someplace else, not here? Captain Fleury straightened up. A look of puzzlement came over her face. There is nowhere but here, she said. But she put her hands on Lena's shoulders. You, my dear, are letting your imagination run away with you. Are you overtired, Lena? Are you anxious? I could tell you, I could put you on a short daze for a while. No, said Lena, I'm fine, I am. But I don't know what, well, but I don't know what to do about, she gestured toward the paper. Never mind, said Captain Fleury. Don't think about it, throw it away. You're worrying too much. I know, I know. We are all, we all are. But there's so much to worry about, and we mustn't let it unsettle us. She gave Lena a long look. Her eyes were the color of dish water. Help is coming, she said. Help? Yes, coming to save us. Who is? Captain Fleury bent down and lowered her voice as if telling a secret. Who built our city, dear? The builders, said Lena. That's right, and the builders will come again to show us the way. They will? Very soon, said Captain Fleury. How do you know that? Or how do you know? Captain Fleury straightened up again. She clapped her hand over her heart. I know it, it I know it here, she said. And I have seen it in a dream. So all of us, all the believers. So that's what they believe, Lena thought. And Captain Fleury is one of them. She wondered how a captain could feel so sure about it, just because she'd seen it in a dream. Maybe it was the same for her, and the sparkling city was for Lena. She wanted it to be true. The captain's face lit up. I know what you must do. Dear, come to one of our meetings. It would lift your heart. We sing. Oh, said Lena, thank you, but I'm not sure I... Maybe sometime. 
She tried to be polite, but she knew she wouldn't go. She didn't want to to stand around waiting for the builders. She had other things to do. Captain Fleury patted her arm. No pressure, dear, she said. If you change your mind, let me know. But take my advice. Forget your little puzzle or project. Lie down, take a nap. Clears the mind. Her narrow face beamed kindness down at Lena. You take tomorrow off, she said. She raised a hand goodbye and went down the stairs. I'm going to stop there. We'll pick up on this chapter uh, tomorrow, and we'll go from there, and uh, we'll, we'll be able to read more. I hope you guys are liking the story. I know Mr. Grouper is. And so I hope you guys are enjoying it. We'll pick up on the rest of that chapter tomorrow. And if you have any questions, I'll please let me know. I hope you guys are having a wonderful week. Uh, maybe get outside and play a little bit. It's supposed to be sunny, a little chilly, but sunny. And I hope you guys are just having a good time. So if you have any questions, please let me know. I look forward to hearing from you guys soon. And have a great day. Talk to you later.